Hello, everyone. Sorry to uh, sorry to have held you up uh, a short while. Apologies. Uh, we've literally just arrived at the uh, the hotel here in uh, Pune, so I apologise for that. Um, thanks for being with us. Um, we'll start off with um, Jeremy and uh, Scott from uh, Talk. Uh, Jeremy, are you okay to lead when uh, when I give you the okay? Yeah, absolutely. No dramas. Um, and then, as usual. Please, um, if you can just use the chat facility to um, indicate if you've got any questions uh, subsequently, if that's okay. Just bear with me. Right. <coughs> Going. We have Jeremy, when, uh, when you're ready, mate. Sure, hi, Jeremy. First of all, to the Joffre Archer news. I mean, how worried are, are you and how concerned uh, should you be? Obviously, it's disappointing for Joffre and disappointing for us. Uh, but it's clearly something that we need to get to the bottom of. And uh, we'll make sure there's every resource surrounding that we can uh, get to the bottom of what's going on and hopefully get him back fighting fit uh, for the future for England. He's going home and then potentially coming back out for the IPL. But in his long term interest, would you prefer it if he missed the IPL, maybe, even though it's so important in this World Cup year? I think first and foremost, we've got to get to the bottom, get to the bottom of the problem of what's going on there. Uh, obviously, he's going to miss a, uh, you know, in the early stages of the IPL, but we'll be led by the, the medics on sort of where we go from there, really. Uh, but first and foremost, you know, we'll be making sure that Joff is OK. Just on the ODI squad then, Joe Root not coming back out to India. Who bats at three? <laughs> and is there an argument for Ben Stokes going there? Well, I mean, it's something that obviously Owen himself... Uh, going to have a talk about tonight actually uh, so I mean there's obviously we've got a, plenty of things to talk through uh, to have a look at who goes where uh, obviously it'll create opportunities for people as well to back, potentially buy in different places uh, and to potentially see one or two sort of uh, fresh faces in there um, so yeah I mean it's for me I see that as an opportunity uh, obviously Joe's not with us uh, I mean he's a fine one day player as we all know, uh, but it's, I mean, it was a, a good opportunity to give him a break as well, having been in the bubble for so long through the test series. Do you think it might be a good spot though for Ben Stokes? Potentially, like I said, Owen and I are going to speak about that tonight once I've, uh, once I've finished talking to you guys. <laughs> okay. I mean, looking at the ODI series, uh, Chris, is it effectively now a consolation <laughs> prize where you have to give some game time to some guys who've been in India, been in India, but not been playing, you know, like uh, Billings, Topley, Liam Livingston and Mo and, and Parkinson. Yeah, I mean, it's not okay. I mean, to me, it's not a consolation prize. Um, obviously, we want to win everything. We are defending world champions, so we want to make sure that uh, you know, I mean, we go out there and we put a, you know, I mean, put a good show in for us. Um, you know, I mean, the World Cup is here in 2023 as well. So again, it's a great opportunity for to us to see conditions to to play out here and get you know, I mean, players' experience under the belt. What's your reflections on the T20 series? England won four of the five tosses. They were at full strength, but still lost. Was it a reality check, do you think, before the World Cup? Well, I think, again, you know, I mean, I, I see it as a good experience for the players to be out here uh, and taking in what the conditions are. Um, you know, I mean, obviously disappointed to lose. Um, you know, I mean, obviously we never, we never, we never like losing. Um, we, sort of, we go into every game wanting to win, but it is a difficult place to come and win. And to be fair, you know, I mean, India played very well as well at times, so we've got to respect that. But we'll certainly be wiser for it. Uh, you know, I mean, coming back here for the World Cup, the players will have experienced how things are, the conditions, the wickets. Uh, you know, I mean, again, experienced how to bowl on these wickets and how to bat, and what works and what doesn't. So, you know, I mean, like I said, disappointed to, you know, I mean, to sort of lose the series. But at the same time, uh, excited about what's in front of us. Uh, and obviously, we'll be a lot wiser for the experience now. Thanks a lot, Chris. Cheers. Thanks, Jeremy. Scott Taylor, please. <clears throat> hey, Chris. We saw in the, the recent T20 series that there was only one change throughout the series, and that was enforced with Mark's heel injury. How hard was it finding that balance between playing your strongest 11, probably for the last time before the World Cup, and but also trying to give the squad players an opportunity to play in India before that World Cup? Well, I mean, one of the things we looked at really was, you know, I mean, trying to get a little bit of role clarity in there as well. Um, obviously, we kept turning up and expecting the wickets to potentially turn as well, um, hence naming 12 players all the time. But the, the wickets were, were firm uh, and good wickets from what we saw. So hence, you know, I mean, obviously, very little change in our, in our team. Uh, 
But again, you know, I mean, I, I think the team that we put out was a very strong team. And we saw at times that, you know, I mean, we controlled the, the power plays. You know, we won a couple, a few of them. Still areas to work on, um, obviously. But uh, no, I think it was just, you know, I mean, the, the way that things panned out that we used with fewer players. There's been a lot of talk about Ben's role in, in the team, also the T20 lineup. How difficult is it when you've got the array of talent you have in your squad to try and find roles for everybody? It is difficult because we've got people that can bat anywhere and sort of for various teams have batted anywhere. But I mean, sort of from Ben's point of view, we see him as a great finisher as well. Um, he's very good at sort of looking at a scoreboard and breaking it down and, and taking into account what needs to be done at any given point as well. So he reads the game very well. Uh, and you need that down the order to, I mean, to try and get us over the line uh, in tight situations. So, you know, I mean, Ben does that fantastically for us. I'm just looking ahead to the the ODIs. I know it's not the T20 format, but how important is it to get that confidence of knowing you can play on a different wickets in a different part of India and still win matches? Well, I mean, that confidence is always important. Uh, you know, I mean, all, like I said, we'll be looking to win these games uh, and to keep, you know, I mean, keeping a role as we are, uh, you know, I mean, in the ODIs. And again, you know, I mean, it will provide opportunities for people as well. Uh, you know, I mean, from a 14 man squad, but we've got some fresh faces there. Uh, so there's potential opportunities for people as well, which is, is equally as exciting for me. And Paul Collingwood was saying the other day he, he's been backing Darren Milan to return to form. He, he did so in that fifth <laughs> T20. But were you surprised with the, the, the criticism and there was some question in his place at number three? Does that just show the, the cutthroat nature of international sport? Well, it can, and we accept that it is at times. But uh, you know, I mean, we all backed Mala to to come through and score the runs. You know, I mean, he's he's a top class player. Uh, we've seen that number one T Twenty batsman. Uh, you know, I mean, his strike rate is high, and it was only a matter of time when he got used to conditions that it was a score around the corner. And I think that's what we saw uh, yesterday. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, John Etheridge, please. It's high. Uh, uh, Joffre has been missing games for more than a year now because of the, the elbow problem. Uh, that's, that's a long time for an injury to be hanging around, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's, it is what it is, John. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not technically the same problem, is it? So it's, uh, you know what I mean? I think that the important thing here is that we actually get it cleared up. Uh, you know what I mean? We get to see the specialist and we make sure that we put everything in place for, for Joffre to, as I've said before, you know I mean, have a long, successful international career for England in all formats. Are you concerned at this stage? I mean, it's only sort of seven or eight months away before the Ashes team leaves that his impact might be produced on that. But if you have said, you know, a number of times that that high pace is a big part of your strategy to try to beat the next winter. Well, to be honest, I don't want to speculate too much of a moment until we find out exactly what's going on with his elbow. Um, you know, I mean, we'll make a plan from there alongside the medics. So at this moment in time, I'm personally, I'm pretty chilled out. Um, but it, like, so the most important thing for me at the moment is making sure that Joffrey sees the right people and we get the right treatment for him. Okay, just a bit of a, a bit of an explain on, on knowing Ali. Obviously, he went home for the last two tests, but sort of being saved, I suppose, for the T20 and the white ball stuff. Obviously, didn't play at all in the T20. Can you give a bit of a bit of an explanation for, for that, really? Well, I've, I've already mentioned that, John. But yeah, I mean, we turned up expecting the wickets to potentially offer a little bit more spin than they did, and they just didn't. I mean, the, the wickets that we played on were firm. Uh, so we picked the team that would benefit from playing on that wicket, uh, but we thought could win on those wickets. So it's as simple as that, really. Uh, just down to the pitch. It, it was literally it was as simple as that. You know, when the, the wickets were firm, uh, we picked the ball in attack that we thought would best suit that wicket. Thank you. Chris Stocks, please. Hi, Chris. Um, Hi, Chris. It, it's, it's been big reported that when Joffre goes home, I assume he's leaving today, um, he will have rest and then an injection on the el into the elbow. Um, can you confirm that? And also, how many injections is he allowed to have in, in a year period? Well, I can't answer the how many because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so it's, uh, I mean, obviously you'd have to ask the medics about that one. Uh, so I wouldn't want to speculate on that either. Uh, but yes, you know what I mean? The, the first part of call, they, they have talked about having an injection into the elbow. And I'm guessing you're hopeful that surgery won't be won't be something you have to go to this year. Well, it's not something I'm thinking of at the moment, uh, purely because you know, I mean, we'll, we'll be guided by the medics, uh, and you know, I mean, we'll see what they come up with. Really, so I mean, touch wood, the, the injection will sort things out. Cool, and I'm guessing you have the ultimate 
confidence in, in your 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 team medics are you confident that all being well Joffre will be fit and firing for, for the World Cup and obviously the Ashes as well afterwards well obviously I want Joffre at the World Cup and the Ashes uh, you know I mean from my point of view he's a great performer and I want him there and yes I have every confidence in my medics to to make sure that we put the best treatment around him and give him the best chance thanks Matt Roller please uh, hi, Chris. Just wanted to ask hi, about um, Matt Parkinson. Um, given he's the only player who will have done the full three months, is it safe to assume he'll get an opportunity at some stage in this? Well, like I say, I mean, obviously, Morgs and I are going to talk about the team later on um, and the various sort of connotations of that. But I mean, on Matt Parkinson, I'm, I've got nothing but praise for Matt. The way that he's conducted himself, uh, the way that he's trained and the way that he's got stuck in helping the lads as well. He's been an absolute delight to have on tour. Uh, you know what I mean? And he's, he's been fantastic while he's been here. Uh, so, but the rest of it, obviously, myself and Moles will have a chat later. Um, and just on Liam Livingston, are you looking at him at the moment as a top order batsman, a middle order batsman, a bowling all rounder? What do you sort of see his role as in this squad? Well, I mean, he's, he's a very talented cricketer, is he? So, you know what I mean? He could play any of us those roles uh, and obviously as when Morgs and I are going through the, the team uh, and the way that we structure it together that will sort of help define his role as well so Cheers. thank you Lizzie Armand please hi Chris hi. Um, just more generally do you think that this rather indicates that it's just not well as a fast what do you mean with the... Well, the I, 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 I'm more about fast bowlers and injuries. It's, it's just not possible to do IPL and all three formats internationally and play all, all, all cricket. Well, I think as a as having been a fast bowler, I understand that you, you play with niggles uh, and you do get injuries. It's as simple as that. It's part and parcel. It's the nature of a beast when you're a fast bowler. Um, and it's it, it, it's difficult anyway. You know what I mean? So it's you could pick up a niggle or an injury at any given point because of the stresses that you're putting your body through constantly. So I guess you've now got quite a balancing act with particularly your bowlers in terms of how much cricket they have before your international summer. You'd obviously want them to have some practice, but not too much. Um, <laughs> is that is that kind of the plan that they have a, have a bit of preparation before the summer, but 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 not loads? Well, I mean, we'll, as we did with the, the World Cup lead into it, we we get on and we have a look at what's in front of them. Uh, you know, I mean, how we can balance things with them, as you mentioned. How we get the best prep moving into it, both physically and from a, obviously a playing workload as well. Uh, we do, what we want is people to arrive fresh in body and mind when we get to the big competitions. So, we... thanks, Liv. Dean Wilson, please. Uh, hi, Spoons. I just wondered what uh, the situation was with Chris Wokes, um, England's Player of the Year last year, hasn't played since September. Um, and he's not coming back for three ODIs, which he, I guess, he's centrally contracted for. Is everything okay there? Everything's absolutely fine. Um, you know, I mean, it's works. He's not here because it's, you know, I mean, he's, he's he's having a break. He's spending some time with his family. Um, you know, I mean, but both. You know, I mean, we we talk about sort of Rooty obviously fits in that bracket as well. But works. He's an outstanding uh, contributor in ODI cricket. We know that. You know, I mean, and it's just with the the schedule as it is, we have to bust holes for people somewhere and it's just this time and just in terms of mowing um you said that the the conditions didn't really um suit playing him in in india um i, I would read that as a bit of a, a fall from grace in the sense that there was a time when it didn't really matter where you played he, he was he was in the, in the side, you know, even in England where, you know, conditions are not necessarily spin friendly either. So what does he need to do to convince you that he's worth a place regardless of conditions? And do you anticipate that he could still play a, a major role in the uh, in the push for the World Cup next uh, in, in, in the I do. Year? Mo's, a, you know, I mean, a, a very important member of our squad. Uh, and just to be clear, it's not in Indian conditions. It was on those pitches in Ahmedabad, but we didn't pick him. Hey, I mean, so we went down a different avenue on that. So just be very clear on that. It's not all conditions in India we're talking about here. We looked at the pitches. Uh, we picked the attack that we believe would be su uh, successful or effective on those pitches in Ahmedabad. 
Um, you know what I mean? But Mo is a very important member of our our squad, and I'm sure he's got a big role to play in the future. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, but you know, it doesn't matter what pitch you play on, you wouldn't not play Adil Rashid, for example, or you wouldn't not play Joss Butler. So, you know, what does Mo have to do to to get himself back into that position, which I I think he was in previously? Well, we only played one spinner, didn't we? So Rash, Rash was that spinner. We played Seamers and that. So it's, you know, I mean, Mo's doing everything he can. He's training hard. He's doing everything right. It was just down to a selection issue on Mo's wicket. So I did, really wouldn't breathe anything more into it than that. And just so far across the winter, you know, it's, it's been quite a long and, and uh, an arduous one with the bubbles. I mean, how, how are you faring and kind of bearing up? I mean, what is the impact of <clears throat> this bubble life? I mean, you know, you were in the same ground for a test match, five T20s, and, you know, it's obviously several players in the same hotel doing the same journey from ground to hotel. And, you know, what is the impact of that? Did we see a bit of a an impact of that on the field? You know, how, how, how do you see it? I don't think so, because obviously, you know, I mean, we have a lot of fresh faces in uh, for the T20 squad and with that comes a, a fresh energy as well. Uh, but I mean, it's great to have a change of scenery as well. And you know, I mean, the ODI is to look forward to, uh, you know, because we were in one place for a long time. Uh, and if you can imagine your life is existing between two floors of a hotel and a cricket ground, it's great to sort of move on to Pune, look forward to the ODIs and, you know, I mean, stay in a different hotel really and have a bit of a change of scenery. It just freshens you up as a, you know, in, in the mind. Um, and obviously we've got to be, like I said, the audience to look forward to now. And just finally for me, is there a chance potentially that Owen may or may not play in any of these games? I know you said you're going to speak to him after uh, after this, but in, in the past he has cleared space for others to get a go. Um, any chance of that in, in this series? Like I said, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to say too much now because I'm going to go speak to Owen basically straight up to this. So. OK, thanks, man. All right, thanks, Dina. Last of all, Paul Newman, please. Hi, Chris. Just another quick hi. one on, on... Hi, hi. Uh, just another quick one on Joffre. Was it very much, you know, a, a, a joint decision for him to take this rest now? You know, we've seen guys <laughs> um, be a bit reluctant maybe to miss big chunks of the IPL because of their profile and the money involved. Was he happy about this or, or, or did he have to be told, no, look, you really need to, to rest again? No, he's, you know, I mean, it was a joint decision and, you know, I mean, both parties have put England first, basically. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, he needs to get this right. Uh, he needs some time to do that. So we've made space uh, to make sure that we give him the best chance of being successful for England. Uh, and, you know, I mean, all parties agreed on that. Uh, you know, I mean, and obviously Joffre was very, you know, I mean, very sort of keen on that as well. He was, you know, I mean, he wants to be at the World Cup and he wants to be at the Ashes. Uh, you know what I mean? So it, was, it wasn't a difficult decision by either side, to be honest. I think it was a sensible decision. That must be pleasing as well, but the, the, he wants to put England first. You know, we, 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 the IPL has been an issue this winter for, for one of your most high-profile players to say, I definitely want to be at the World Cup, I definitely want to be at the Ashes, I'm going to miss this now. It must be quite satisfying. It is very satisfying. It shows, you know, I mean, it shows how passionate Joffre is uh, about playing for England, how much he enjoys playing for England. Uh, you know I mean? And equally, we... We respect that and we enjoy having him around. So whatever we can do to help him, we will. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. OK, everyone. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Speak to you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.